So shortly after I worked at Monsoon, I got the chance to work at Marks and Spencers. Uh, now, I guess Marks and Spencers have different head offices located all over the country. The, the London head office is located in, in Paddington, um, in like a newly developed area. And it's, it's a really beautiful building because it's, um, it's fully made of glass. So you can see uh, every floor and see what's going on there. So from the outside, it looks stunning. And um, I remember when I, when I got there uh, on the first day, the, um, the gentleman, I think was, his name was actually Mark, <laughs> that came down to greet me and then take me up to the floor where we'd be working. And, you know, he was very pleasant and just, just talking and then, he, he walked me into the lift and then before I knew it, the lift was going up. But what I hadn't prepared for is that the, the lift is, it is glass. So as it's going up, I can see the floor kind of getting further and further away from me. And I, I've got extremely uh, severe vertigo. So I just froze and, and gripped the handlebar. And he didn't clock on why I just stopped talking and lost eye contact. Um, and I, I was literally frightened because I think there's about, there's at least five floors in the MS in the MS head office building. And we were at the, at the, the very, very top. And it took me a while to let go when we got to the top of the, the, the lift and to walk out. And even, even when I did, I was moving quite gingerly. Um, so he was, he was really kind of nice about it and, um, he did maybe say I should go on, on the stairs next time, but the, the, the way it turned out, cause I was there for a couple of weeks, I, I had to use the freight elevator to go up and down because after two days, I just couldn't do it. It was just too much, um, <laughs> for my senses to do that every day. Um, now, in terms of my experience working there, it was, it, it was, I think the most corporate setup of all the places I've been to because they, I think Mark Spencer's were the biggest company of all the businesses I'd worked at. So there was very much um, uh, a relaxed environment um, because I'd worked in different places before. I knew that I didn't have to rush. Um, I could go and take my tea breaks when I wanted to, um, as, as long as I was showing that I was doing work. Um, there was a, a variation of men's wear and women's wear that I was working on. A again, it was, um, it was, we were making uh, mock-ups, we were making fit samples, we were making uh, gold seal samples because obviously Mark Suspensers do their manufacturing abroad. Um, but they, they had every machine that one would need to do the job, but their, their technical team seemed smaller than I, I thought it would be. Um, I think, I think maybe some of them might have been ill, uh, which is why I was hired for the period that I was, but I, I, I did expect like a team of about, of about at least 20 machinists, but, th but that wasn't what, what I saw, uh, in my time there. I guess one thing I learned from working with the companies like m and is a, a different type of attention to detail because they're, um, they're not worried about finances. They're just worried about um, execution and, and cost. So if they, for example, if they want to produce a, a, a product for uh, £17.50, the, the amount of ten, attention to detail that will go into making sure that it's produced on budget is is astounding because it's key to the existence of their business. They won't release a style that is over budget just because they want to be creative. The the higher ups, the management, the the, the accounting department have to approve that that spend. So if if it means taking off one button. Just, just so that they would um, meet the the financial the financial target. If it means um, recutting the, the the fabric so that it's uh, more efficient, 
that's what they will do. And many times that's why there was, um, that's why we're, we're sampling and resampling some of these same designs because there is that cost benefit analysis that has to be achieved. Otherwise the, the design doesn't reach the, the shop floor. Um, I, I think in terms of M&S, uh, it's quite nostalgic to me because uh, my, my parents bought a lot of M&S &S, M &S stuff. So it was, I mean, they, they were chuffed when they heard that I got the job at M&S, even though it was a short period, period of time. It was nice to see the inner workings of such a huge corporation and the respect that they put to uh, the creative side of their business. And what you'll find is that um, the, the creative side of a business and the financial side, they're normally at loggerheads because the, the creative part wants to um, uh, achieve the goal. They, they want to achieve the vision. Whereas the creative side, the, the, the financial side, wants to make sure that we're still in business next week and the year after uh, because they've got the, the, the wages to think about first and foremost. But yeah, I, I mean, it's, it was a place that I, I enjoyed working at. Definitely a positive environment. It's not a, a setup that for me personally, I um, would, would have wanted to have stayed in much longer. I definitely prefer working for the, the high end brands. I think it was just down to the uh, kind of products that I was doing. And because I am very high fashion, that's definitely my area of comfort and it's def it was definitely where I wanted my career to, to go into. So.